Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're doing another buying guide for the Pentax 6x7. As always, this show is sponsored by camerastore.com. They have a lot of Pentax gear and everything's checked by their technicians, so buy with confidence. So when we're talking about the Pentax 6x7, it's a medium format camera SLR, so single lens reflex. It shoots 6x7 film, I mean 6x7 shots on 120 and 220 film. 220 is pretty much discontinued and some of them even had Polaroid backs with the FP100C that that's discontinued. So if you do have some you can shoot, but mostly usually roll film is the only option. So there's four models in the Pentax 6x7. First version was the Pentax 6x7 non-MLU, which means it didn't have the mirror lockup, so you couldn't put the mirror up, shoot without that movement. And then the next one was the 6x7 MLU. The way to differentiate, they have a little up here in the mirror, which you can see it here. So when I press this, it would go up. I need to cock it and have it with film. But when you press this, the mirror would lock up and then you have to take your shot. You cannot not take a shot because you'll lose that frame. So once you click the mirror lock up, you're gone. You got to shoot basically. So they have the 6x7 non-MLU, the 6x7 normal. Then they came out with the 6x7 and that's all it says. No 6x, no X for the 6x7. And that version was a little enhanced, but it basically looks exactly the same as the 6x7, but the name just says 6x7. And then the last version that is the one that changed totally was the 6x7 which is the one here. It has its own grip. It has, you know, the whole mirror prism has uh, auto or exposure measurements on the, on the prism. It has a nicer advance. It has a film uh, reminder on the back and, you know, a lot of other features. Physically, it looks similar, but it's not the same. It's the most advanced one and usually goes for the heftier price. So when you want to buy a uh, Pentax, what things should you be aware of? First of all, the body. As I told you, four different bodies, check that one. If you wanna know if it's a not an MLU, as I said, the little knob here. That's about all the difference you'll see. Then, if you're purchasing it and it comes with a prism, remember that it has a very special sequence to changing lens and the TTL prism, which is not this prism here. The TTL has a bit of an arm that goes over the speed dial and if that is there, you have to first take off the prism pressing these two buttons if you want to check that out and you'll see there's the focusing screen and there's a little chain here on the bottom. So where it says Pentax here, there's a little chain and you want that chain to be in mint condition, not broken, not missing, just perfect. So if you have the TTL, you have to take off the prism to be able to take off the lenses. To take off the lenses, you have to press the button on the left hand side and that way you can see how it moves here and basically that would mean you take off the lens this is the body basically. One thing to be to bear in mind is it does use a battery. So on the bottom plate, you can check that there's a bar battery compartment. You lift up the little knob, twist it, and you pull it out. Without this battery, the camera will not operate in any way. So you wanna make sure you take one of these. I think it's LR4, LR44. Let me just double check for you guys. Four LR44 batteries. So to put it back in, you basically have to put it in. There's no way in properly, you can put it both ways. So just put it in, check where the plus is, which is that way. And then we push it back in and lock it. Once the battery is there, there's a battery indicator on the back here. So I press this button, this little uh, LED or LED light would turn on. So that means there's battery. When does the battery run out? It takes quite a while, but when it does run out, it sounds horrible. Basically, your mirror locks up halfway. You think you broke the camera. You just have to put another battery and then just sort of like re it and stuff. You do lose a frame. This little button on the side will actually help you reset the mirror and then you can just do everything normally. But you want that chain to work. You want the battery to work, basically. This is a normal prism, no TTL. As you can see, there's no little arm on the left side hand or your right side from where you're looking. And uh, this just corrects the vision. There's a waist level finder, which is great. But the problem with six by seven cameras that are SLRs is if you're using the waist and you want to do a portrait, you can't really focus like this. It's actually really confusing. So a little prism goes a long way. When you put the prism in, you just have to push it in to hear those clicks. I'll do it again so you guys can hear. Let me do it. So I'm gonna be quiet, listen to those clicks. 
that means the prism is locked. Now I could lift the camera from the prism. And then we can put the lens. If you're doing the TTL, remember first the lens, then the TTL prism. You wanna keep that order because you don't wanna break the chain. And the chains do break and it's hard to fix. So you don't wanna break that. Then lenses, uh, when you're buying the Pentax 6x7, the usual lens used to be the 105 f2.4. That's the what everyone wants. It's a great lens. It usually has a bit of yellowing, so be careful because it does have that sort of, you know, a radioactive yellowing that some Takumars and Pentax lenses have. If it's yellow, you might want to bring the price down. If it's not yellow, you're lucky. This is a newer sort of lens. The older one has this sort of metallic grip on the side. The newer ones have this rubberized ring. So that's the way to know if the 105 is a newer or the older version. You might want to stick with the newer version. So the other lens that's the normal is the 90 2.8. And there's two versions of that. There's the 90 2.8 normal and the 90 2.8 LS, which is leaf shutter. Pentax had two lenses that would sync at all speeds uh, with flash and those were the leaf shutter ones just like a Hasselblad or a Mamiya RZ67. These lenses will only sync at 130th and uh, you have the X speed here but is 130th. It only would work well in studio environments where you can control the you know extra light and whatever. So if you want to shoot flash just get that in mind. After that you have as I said the normal prism, the TTL, the waist level finder, there is a little chimney one that's pretty rare to see, but you can also find it sometimes, but that comes pretty rare. Then there is a little extra like accessory to have a loop on the back end. They're pretty rare to see, but it's useful if you want to. There's no film reminder in the back, which is kind of annoying. Uh, and on the bottom plate, basically nothing there except for the battery. Then the strap uses a strap that's, you know, proprietary. It ha kind of has to have these stra strap lugs that are actually really good, the original ones. And also the Optech straps are great. This is a heavy camera. You're going to be walking around with it. You want that Optech. It has that neoprene finish. I'll leave the link below for that if you want to know. Uh, then the camera has a lock on and a lock off. You want to make sure that when it's locked, it works. And when it's unlocked, it also shoots tripod screw you want to see that that's working and you know maybe bring a cable release and uh, if you want to know if it shoots I do have a video on how to shoot with no film on the Pentax but it's super simple you just have to open the back and when you open the back you do want to check that the cloth shutter is in good condition you don't want to poke anything or it doesn't want to look like someone burnt it so make sure that that you can touch it slightly but don't poke it don't let your kids poke it I've had that happen before uh, extra fi film reel for 120 is useful, so always carry one with you. But basically, if you want to shoot without film, you have to push the advance, close the back, and now when I advance, you can hear that tension, it's ready to shoot. So now I could basically focus and shoot and just keep on advancing. This is a great way when you're buying a camera to check that it works. No film included, nothing like that. You could even have you know, some sort of way to look through. Basically, if I open the back, it wouldn't let me shoot. So I'm guessing you can't do that. But yeah, basically you wanna check that that works. Lock function works. Now we could also shoot the mirror up so we can click the mirror. You heard the mirror. Now I'd have to shoot to take the whole shot in advance. One thing also very important is the 12220 mark. When you were shooting 120 or 220, you wanted to use a coin or something to flip it from 120 to 220 to go past those 10 frames. And uh, also the back plate is very important. You want to have that back plate have the 120 to 220. So that's 220, 120, and ready to go. So basically that, light seals and stuff, that's the usual stuff with film cameras. You want to check they're all right, you know, no extra space between the hinge and the locks properly. There's always a bit of wiggle, at least on mine. Don't be too concerned about that. But yeah, basically when you're buying a Pentax 6x7, those are the few things I think are most important. You do have your flash sinks here, which usually have a little cap. These always get lost, never found again. So those are important. And uh, it does use a little wooden handle, which is a bit nice to take. And this is actually the locking pin for that. But it's useful, but not super important to have. So yeah. Basically, that's all for the Pentax 6x7 non-MLU and MLU. 
So with the Pentax 6x7 II, there's a quite a few other things to be considering. As you can see, this one has a broken choice for the AE prism, so you can't choose between spot metering and uh, center metering and matrix metering. You wanna check that the ISO works, that it turns on and off. It does have multiple exposures, so you can do that. You couldn't do multiple exposure with the old version unless it was factory uh, change, which had like a little thing on the side. I've actually owned one, but I don't have it anymore. Um, you wanna check the batteries. These batteries are different. I'll leave the link to the batteries under and the name on the screen so you can check them out. I can't remember right now. It does use two batteries. And uh, basically everything else is the same on this camera when you're shooting. So mirror lockup and all that stuff is the same. One thing with the 6x7 II and what this one is uh, having is the advance breaks very easily. So this one's jammed. I'm gonna be sending it to camera store for them to fix and resell because I'm done with it. Second time it's jammed. These cameras do break, so don't expect to pay a ton of money for it, or you're gonna pay a lot of money for it, but it will break eventually. These also sort of break with the advance, so be careful when you shoot. Uh, just kind of like when you shoot in advance, you wanna help it come back. I've seen a bunch of people out there on YouTube shooting, and when they shoot, they just let go. That won't help the mechanism. That's a good practice for every single film camera. When you shoot in advance, just kind of help it back if you want your camera to last forever. These are not longer made, and none other film cameras either, so you wanna take care of that. So yeah, basically that's pretty much the differences. Uh, this one does have a lot more things to it, and maybe I'll make a video only on the Pentax 6x7 II but this one's broken and I can't really show you how it works. So yeah, guys, I hope this little buying guide for the Pentax 6x7 helped you. If you have any questions or doubts, let me send me questions below. I'll leave all the links to the cameras and all the things I mentioned in the video on the description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.